G'day tubers, welcome back. So the box is still sitting on my bench the next day. Unfortunately the um the Sparky had another emergency or something and he couldn't come out. It may have been something to do with my insistence about I wanted to film the, the process of installing even if it took a little bit longer and I had to pay him or uh, he was dead set. He's not getting filmed. Unfortunately that's not going to happen so I thought I'd take you through what's in the box and do a little bit of before and after. So I'll take you out there and I'll show you through what a, um, a device that's been in service for what, three and a bit years has produced and any other nuances that I can tell you about when I'm out there. So let's open this box and take a look what's inside. You can almost bet there's gonna be questions. That's a 1976 Leyland Mini. No, it's not the electric one, it's a different one. The top of the box, we've got uh, lots of stuff all piled together. we got the operation manual and installation manual. I'll link this sort of stuff in the description below to the digital version, just in case you'd like to have a look and see if I've missed anything. Product registration, my serial number. Dear customer, thank you for choosing my energy product range. If you experience any issues, thank you very much, car going past. Uh, during or post in installation, please contact technical support assistance first, Monday to Friday. No, Monday to Thursday, 9 to 5, Friday, uh, 9.30 to 5 o'clock. So, that's pretty neat. And that looks like an Aussie number. So that's good. My energy diverter. We've got some more advertising material. Zappy, of course I've got that. A hub, got that and got that. Their marketing clearly works. Right here, have a look inside. I know there's no need to point this out, but that's really thick cardboard. Uh, for all intents and purposes, oh, that's heavy. That's exactly like my other one I installed. If you haven't already, go back. It's a five and a half minute video, a bit of a montage of installing the last one, so we don't have to watch it again in this video, because we can't do it. Now, what else have we got in here? We should have a CT clamp. Ooh, I was hoping for a CT clamp. A nice little aerial and then a couple of zip ties for um, cable management. I'm assuming this is exactly the same as the old one with only a few minor changes. Put the side cover off. Taking a look at the two side by side. The front PCB pretty much looks the same and that's where your CT clamps and stuff hook in when we're, when we're using the CT clamps connected to here. Fortunately, we won't be using that anymore. That'll be going straight into the wireless unit and the backboard looks a complete redesign We've got these two coils here That were sort of underneath here. If you can see on this side, they're sort of hiding underneath that board And if you have a look on mine currently now as we're looking at it a couple of years later You can see the coil on this side is actually discolored uh, What I'm assuming is that is uh, like um, circuit one and that was circuit two or vice versa so the outputs, sorry, the outputs. So I've been using this one and this one still looks brand new on mine. So that's just the thing, I guess. To be fair, I don't actually know what I was looking at inside of that new one, but this is the old one. So it's still in service. We haven't taken it out. It's not being replaced because it's broken. It's just because I want the connectivity to work. So we have a quick look through here. We've got waiting for surplus. So this is the main screen. We're currently drawing 0.1 of a kilowatt from the grid, maybe not. Uh, and we've put into the hot water system 5.43 kilowatt hours today. So on the front screen, you can tell, you know, what we've done. Now, if you can see just below it, we've got the boost one and two. So that is what I was referring to with that darker spot up in here on the, um, on the inside. You can just see it's been used more on one side than the other. So we'll have a quick look around here. So we'll go to the menu, click on menu, and we look at savings first. We click on the tick. Got five kilowatt hours today, seven yesterday, 19 this week, 72 this month, uh, 443 so far this year, and 5,722 kilowatt hours in total. Now that would put it at about $1,200, I think, worth of electricity that I've saved. And this device itself, I paid 
it was what, what was it it was about seven hundred and twenty dollars i believe i looked on the wayback machine for that price because i can't honestly remember so i've gotten much more than the unit cost itself back and i could reasonably expect this to go for another couple of years without any problems whatsoever editor pete needs to add some more sort of context to the price and value of that unit itself now so what's that 5,700 kilowatt hours that doesn't take into account um, I still had to buy the energy so I worked that at about 20 cents per kilowatt hour give me a second I'll do some maths with a calculator so 5722 uh, two times 0. Uh, 0. 0.2 so that's 20 cents per kilowatt hour so that's $1,144 that I have directly saved using that hot water diverter now i pay 20 about 26 cents per kilowatt hour for most of that time it's higher now i won't worry about that because it makes maths hard so the price has actually gone up but before we were paying we were saving 20 cents per kilowatt hour so that's how i worked that out so i take that six cents per kilowatt hour that we would be earning if we fed it back to the grid so it still costs us something i so you know so to speak now there's also another thing that before before solar diverter we also used most of our hot water at night time um so the sun's still up at four o'clock my kids jump in the shower and then i jump in the shower about seven o'clock at night so the hot water system doesn't reheat in the middle like at the beginning of the night then i jump in again into a steaming hot shower and have another shower and because it's steaming hot i have a bloody half hour shower um and then it heats up again and then through the night it stays hot and then the next morning you know so you're using exponentially more power just to keep the water at that higher temperature where it could go 12 hours where it's below you know 50 degrees or even lower um that said that that comes into that cost analysis as well and if you look there it was five kilowatt hours today in winter i can assure you it can be triple that without any problems at all we can go through 20 kilowatt hours every single day for hot water in winter before we got the solar diverter so i don't know how you work the maths out but personally if i had to look at that and go say 1200 bucks in three years again maths um I would say the ROI was closer to 12 months than three years if you take everything else into account. As it stands there with that, it's about 18 months. So you can't really complain about that. And the caveat to that is it does not include installation. It would have cost perhaps a few hundred dollars to get that installed as well. But to be fair, every time I had an electrician here, they did a bunch of stuff. It wasn't just that. So breaking up that invoice, it'd be fairly difficult. Anyway, tubers, back to Pete talking more. So we get out of that. Uh, we go down to readings. I don't know what this shows you. I'm not proficient with this menu. It's more just showing you around and what it's got. So you get out of readings, go to information, and that just says uh, serial number, a uh, calibration date was in 2018. Uh, the power last went out on the 8th of the 10th, 20, on 2022, at 12.46. Um, so I don't even remember the power going out that day, may not have been home or something uh, for my version, which is something I can't actually update because I'm not connected to the internet. Uh, grid sensor, local, uh, network ID, device address, master address, channel, etc. Out of that, main menu, link devices info, that won't have anything there other than itself. Uh, booster timer, that's just when you've got uh, heater one and heater two, so you can so you can turn around and you can say you want to turn on a timer. And then if you want to do top one, so you can do in-floor heating or a pool pump or something like that, or no, not a pool pump, a, a pool heater, anything that's got induction heating. Go into settings, go time and date, um, nothing much there. Display icons, so you can actually change some of the icons. Um, language, English, backlit, 
timeout is 30 seconds. Contrast is just standard. Uh, what else have we got? Get out of that. Settings, time and date, display, priority. Oh, so you can do the priority, so heater one or heater two. And I think that's about it. But as you can see, the unit itself is actually working really, really well, even after all these years. So it is definitely installed. I'm gonna get somebody that says it's not installed or working. I'll turn around. There you go, active beehive. Well, two active beehives, but there you go. Let's get out of the way so the Sparky can get in here and do his thing and a few other little things I need done inside the house. And we'll see you back in just a moment. So we're the next morning. The electrician has just left. He rocked up super early this morning. I'm gonna watch those bees. He watched me get tagged. And I've cleaned up most of his mess. I think there's a little bit more couple cables down there and stuff I've got to grab. But he's done his thing. And I got it straight out here and configured it all up. So now I'm actually connected. But she's all been updated and ready to go. She's all been linked. So the Eddie and the Zappy, it was nice and easy. I've got the Eddie as the, and this is the Eddie. So the hot water system diverter is currently diverting now. So doing 620 watts to the hot water system. And we're producing 1700 watts with the grid tie inverter. We've got the devices set to Eddie first and then the Zappy. So that actually prioritizes the hot water system over the car charging. Uh, what do we got to get into settings, time and priority test, the heater one, heater two. So we've only got the heater one hooked up. Go to advanced, go away, Mr. B. Uh, link devices. We've got devices, Eddie, Zappy and the hub. Um, for some reason that's not on. I think he might have actually put the old CT clamp onto this one, so I'll have to change that in a minute. Uh, pairing mode, channel. So one of the big things, getting it to pair, uh, you set it to search for master. Before I did that, before I could get it to work, I must have tried about 10 times. On this device, I had to hit reset settings. It had never been set up before by me, so I hit reset settings and then away it went. I uh, did the time and date. So this device is actually the slave to the car charger, the Zappy. So it's master, this is slave, but this has got priority. Go work that out. Anyways, it is working and check this out. The applicate, the app, the app, the app is awesome. It works so well. Check this out. I loaded it up to a short to my YouTube channel last night, but check it out. You can go through all the pages. You can, you can have a look at everything and how it works or how much stuff is actually getting exported, how much stuff is being imported or from the batteries or from the grid. It's bloody great. It's my new television. Absolutely freaking love it. So check back in a few weeks. I'll do another update on this one here. Um, we're going to be able to go savings and we're going to, you know, we've got almost nothing. I don't know why there's something there in yesterday. Um, but today, that might have been before I actually changed the, um, the date around. But we've done 1.27 kilowatt hours so far today. So if I go back to the main page, that's also reflected there on the main page. So if we go back to the electric car, which is not here, is getting an 18 plus card for my son at the moment. The electric car charger is a few steps away from my front door. So the car comes up here, parks up and can charge. So charge log today yesterday we'll just go total the car has been charged with 894 kilowatt hours 715 kilowatt hours of those directly from the solar we don't try and just charge from solar if we if if the car needs charging if i'm going out and doing something um we're more than happy just to sort of go back to the main screen it's got sitting on eco mode at the moment you can change it to fast you click go and the car starts charging in the fast mode or alternatively i can do it sitting on the couch or sitting in the mcdonald's drive-through with the app on my phone <laughs> 